So let me do that right now. Um, and actually there's something else I wanted to do. I was gonna try to take this and put it live on Facebook, but I don't wanna mess with that right now because we're kind of behind. We'll do it next time. So back to basics, we're going to talk about what are essential oils. We're going to talk about how to use them properly. I definitely want to, you guys to unmute during that time to ask your questions because you all have different health issues. So I want to make sure that you know how to use your oils more effectively. One of the things I've learned over the years, and I've been using essential oils for a very long time before doTERRA eight years ago, I was using another very popular brand of essential oils and I was not getting results. And I really think it's because I didn't have someone like me or Lisa or Kimberly or Nicole or Michelle to reach out to and say, I need help. So that's what I kind of want to focus on is effective and efficient usage, because I don't want you guys using 10 drops of essential oil at a time. Nobody's got that kind of money, right? <laughs> and honestly, less is more, but you use them more often. Who here has made the mistake of using too much oil at once? Can I tell you guys a funny story? It wasn't funny at the time. And I'm sure we all have one of these funny stories It wasn't funny at the time. So my last baby, he's three now. I had him in the water. I was in the water for three hours. What happens to your skin when you're in the water for three hours? It's very porous and ready to take anything in that you put on it. Well, when I was done, I had this great idea. The after pains get worse with more babies. Who here has two or more, maybe three or four babies? Five, you know, those after pains get worse. It's worse than the birth. And I remember going, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So guess what I did? I grabbed deep blue. I put a little bit on my stomach, and it didn't work. So this is where I should know better, right? I know it takes a couple of minutes for oils to start working. Didn't work, so I put more on. Didn't work, put more on. By the time I realized what was happening, my stomach was on fire. That took care of the after pains though, because it was worse than the after pains. So rule number one, don't put oils on freshly clean skin that you just like when you just got out of the shower or a bath. You wanna make sure they're very, very diluted in that instance. So I'll give you an example of what to do. So that was the example of what not to do. So what to do, let's say you got out of the bath, your joints hurt, or maybe your back hurts, or maybe you've got like some sort of skin issue. My favorite thing to do, and I don't have one with me, I left it in the other room, but we actually have a lotion that's a carrier lotion. I love this lotion, or you can use fractionated coconut oil. I actually have both of them in my bathroom. There you go. She has the old version of the, um, what it looks like. So it actually is a more of a blue green color now. And so what I do is I put a dollop of lotion in my skin, like enough lotion that would cover probably the front part of my torso or one leg. And then I add one drop of essential oil to it. After a bath, I love using Aroma Touch if it's warm outside or I'm really warm. If not, I'll use something like Serenity or Lavender. And then I apply that to my skin. That's the perfect amount of dilution for me. Okay. So there's your first tip. Because I know we like using essential oils in water, right? Let's say you did have um, back pain, or let's say you're getting in the bath or you just wanted to soak your feet after a long day on your feet and your feet were maybe a little puffy or swollen. What you can do is put some aroma touch on with some coconut oil, like one drop per foot of aroma touch or lavender or deep blue, and then soak your feet in room temperature water. The reason why I say that is because cold will make the oils too cold. And oils don't move as freely and comfortably in cold water. And then warm water might actually make them drive in too fast. So room temp is actually, or maybe a little tepid, a little warmer than room temp. Okay. Now let's say you're taking a bath and you want to put oils in your bath. This is where it gets a little tricky. Everyone gets excited about putting oils in their Epsom salts, which you can totally do. Unfortunately, though, essential oils don't soak into Epsom salts completely and stay trapped because the Epsom salts dissolve. So then the essential oils are in the water, just as if you would have dropped them in the water. 
So the best way to put essential oils in your bath water is with soap. So I have a little thing that I do. I have this big pitcher by my bathtub. It's actually really big, but you can use a cup. And I put one squirt of soap in there. So I don't have massive amounts of bubbles. And then I drop my essential oils into the soap. And then I put that uh, cup of soapy essential oil water or essential oil in the cup. And I put it under the stream in the bath. And I just let it foam up and fill up over the cup and fall into the water. And that is the best way that I've ever figured out to disperse essential oils in my bath. Because what I've noticed is that when I get in the bath, I don't see the little slick spots across the top of the water of those essential oils kind of finding each other. So that's my water tip. Now, here's an internal water tip, okay? So who loves putting essential oils in their cups of water? So cold water, or warm water, which one do you think is better? I can see your tepid. mouths moving. Tepid. Tepid. Room temperature. Room temperature. Yeah. So when you're cold, what do you do? You do this. When you're warm, your body wants to spread out because it's trying to get maximum amount of space exposed to a cool breeze. So essential oils are kind of the same thing. Do this at home. It's really interesting. Take really, really cold water and then drop an essential oil in it. And you will see that essential oil get into a nice little tight ball. But when you put it in room temp or even warm water, like when you're using it with a tea, when you drop that essential oil, it spreads out flat across the surface. If it's a citrus oil, if it's a heavier oil like peppermint or cinnamon, it's gonna kind of go down a little bit further. So kind of cool, huh? You know, I learned that hard lesson. I was eating out one time and they had glass glasses. So I dropped orange in my glass. It stung my mouth. Like it just made my mouth so irritated because those essential oils were just all stuck together. Does anybody have any questions about what I just covered? Was that helpful? Okay, good. It's one of those things that you kind of experiment with and you kind of learn on your own. And so I wanna teach you what I learned on that. Okay, am I back? Perfect. I paused for a second. You did. Okay, so. Ami has her hand up. Oh, yes. Go, Ami. What question do you have? Okay, so you were talking about the bath salts and essential oils. What about like when you make bath bombs? How is that? That's different just because it's, it's with um, baking soda and not bath salt? It does, I noticed this a little bit better and I think it's because the essential oil has um, more time to absorb and the other things that are in it, but I've still noticed that it doesn't do as well as soap. So I'm not a huge fan of bath bombs personally. Like if you're wanting your bath to have Epsom or baking soda, I personally just put baking soda in the water. It's a lot easier than making stuff and going and finding all the ingredients. But if you, if you ever learn anything about me, you will find out I'm not a huge fan of doing a bunch of DIY recipes with essential oils because I got four kids and two jobs. So I don't have time for that. So what I actually have is a bag of Epsom. I have a box of baking soda and I actually put the stuff in the tub. But if you like making bath bombs, do it for sure. And you're gonna wanna use the essential oils that I think are better in the situation are like lavender and serenity um, because they're more calming, less irritation potential. Thank you. So is that yours? What is that, Lisa? Is that baking soda? Sorry, Epsom salts two different colors, pink and white, and it's peppermint in there. And that's what I sprinkle into my bath. I like DIY. I was gonna say, I put a full cup of, of Epsom in my tub water. So your little sprinkle, that's really cute. I'm like scooping it in. <laughs> um, 
All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is super basic. I wanted to cover the water thing because I feel like a lot of people have those questions. I've actually been getting more messages on them than anything else right now because um, just everyone's trying to stay healthy. So the next thing I want to talk about is a definite back to basics thing. And I did not prep my team for this at all. So I'm probably going to pull them in. So let's talk about the three cool things about essential oils. What is the first cool thing about essential oil that everybody needs to know? Kimberly. They're safe. They're safe. Why? They're safe. They're natural products. They come from plants. They're CPT, CPTG uh, grade. So they're therapeutic, certified pure therapeutic grade. And they're safe for little ones, pets, adults, children, elderly. Yeah. And the most important thing that we need to know is they're not adulterated. When we use an essential oil, so before I go into this, let's go to the next one. What is the second cool thing about essential oils? It starts with an E. They're effective. They're effective. How are they effective? They work on the cellular level. So they are not, they're oil based, they're essential oils, so they can penetrate the cell membrane that's oily and they can get in and fight bad guys on the insides of our cells and they can also do the stuff the fighting on the outsides of our cells so they're really effective and oftentimes more effective than traditional um, medical care because of that yeah when you take a tylenol tylenol doesn't go cellular an antibiotic can't go cellular but an essential oil can even adulterated ones so if you're putting an adulterated essential oil into your body and it goes cellular, what can actually happen is it can pose a risk to your cells. And those little guys, they don't need that. This is why it's so important to eliminate toxins in your life as best as possible, because eventually too many toxins can affect your cellular health. So I want to make sure that we talk about that. We're all using doTERRA here, so I'm not too worried, but you guys have friends. So I always say... Friends, uh, you know, love your friends and make sure that you don't let them use oils that can hurt their family. So Kimberly, There's one more just, cool thing. Yes, we're not there yet. I noticed somebody raised their hand. Darlene, did you have a question? Yes. What does adulterated mean? There. Oh, great question. Who wants to answer that? Kip, Michelle. Okay, so adulteration is when you add extra stuff so okay. um my so analogy, fillers yeah like it, fillers well, maybe okay. not even fillers maybe it's something that's from a different plant it <laughs> the more you hear me the more you'll understand that i use old analogies it's poop in the brownies okay <laughs> <laughs> that works yeah, that was a great analogy. So yeah, sometimes they use um, other cheaper essential oils. Cassia is really commonly used to adulterate cinnamon. It won't necessarily hurt you. It's just that cinnamon is meant for one thing and cassia is meant for another. Do you remember when um, Dr. Pappas tested oils? He found turpentine in one of the essential oils. That's crazy scary. And, that was tea uh, tree oil. Was yep. it tea tree that he found? They the put, turpentine yeah, in? they used melaleuca. And they put they put turpentine in melaleuca to make right. it smell like melaleuca. And so some other oils had perfumes put in it, mm -hmm. which shouldn't have been there as well. Mm -hmm. And just yeah. to clarify, yes, just to clarify, they didn't actually put the turpentine in that you would buy like at the Home Depot for you know in the paint department. What they're actually using is, is a chemical constituent that is still not good, and that's what they're putting in. So it'll still have the harmful effects. So those are the first two cool things. We have safe, we have effective. What's the third cool thing about essential oils? They're affordable. Affordable. They are. Yes. Many of them are like pennies per dose. Ami, what do you have to add to that? They're more affordable than traditional medical care. 
so let's say uh, you feel sick, okay? So number one, you have to get an appointment with the doctor and sometimes they can't see you for a month or two. So you're stuck there and then you might have to take off time off work. And then you're gonna have to spend gas. You're gonna have to have a co-payment and you're gonna have to have a co-payment for that uh, medicine besides the time off of work. So it's just so easy. Like if I have a headache, I just pull out my you know, peppermint and just stick it on my temples. Or sometimes I just open the bottle. It doesn't even cost anything to just sniff it. And I get the benefit that way by inhaling it. So, I mean, that doesn't even cost anything and I didn't have to go anywhere. I can just reach for it. I can, uh, figure out to take care of my own health with just using my essential oils in a safe way. Yeah. And that's really empowering. And that's what gets me so excited to teach all of you, because I want to empower the rest of you as well to, you know, when you're not feeling right or something's wrong, or even if you have an injury, unless it's an injury where you can see the bones sticking out. Okay, guys, you got to go to the doctor for that one. But, you know, to feel empowered to go to your oil stash, open it up and be like, okay, what do I need? And then also know that if you're not really sure, first of all, they're not going to hurt you if you grab the wrong one. Okay. Um, just don't put them in your eyes, but, um, you know, grab it. If it's not quite working the way you hoped, reach out to one of us. We always get texts and messages all the time. That's what we're here for. So definitely reach out to us. And the cool thing is since you're all our oily customers, we are way more faster at responding to you than we are to the general public <laughs> because we don't really know what they're using. So we're a little bit more cautious with that. So, um, so those are the three cool things. And I wanted to just make a comment on the cheaper thing. So this is actually something a lot of people don't believe on. And I have many of my customers that even really struggle with this as well. When you have um, three things um, involved with your essential oils, you have somebody that can teach you how to use them effectively, efficiently, and reminding you to use them. Those three things are actually going to save you money because a lot of times without proper education, you end up using a lot more than you need, or you use maybe ones in combination in ways that aren't really as helpful for you. So I really want to encourage you that if you're using some things or you're trying or experimenting and you're not getting results that you want to let us know. So, oh, I was looking at the chat. Lisa's over there laughing about something. So um, we are definitely um, available. And if we don't know, we actually have this little chat group where we get together and we're like, hey, someone's asking us this question. We don't really know what's working best. What do you guys know about this? And we all just kind of pool our thoughts together and we help support those people in that way. All right, so safe, effective, and cheaper. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that part? All right, if you do, just put it in the chat or we can circle back to it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is another very basic thing, the three ways that you can use your essential oils. And I bet you guys are gonna have questions here. So what's one of the first ways that we can use our essential oils? What am I doing? Aromatically. Aromatically. So do you guys have a bottle of essential oil near you? I'm, I have frankincense. I'm going to use this one. So aromatically means you breathe them in. One of the things that's really cool about essential oils is they are lipids, but they're volatile. Do you guys know what volatile means? I promise it won't explode. Kimberly. It means they go from a liquid to a vapor very quickly. Yes. And they move. They get very excited. So just by opening this bottle of essential oil, those molecules are already moving up and out. By placing it under my nose and breathing it in, I'm just giving them a place to go. So when you use your oils aromatically, they go into your nose and they hit your limbic system. This is where we retain memories. This is the part of our brain that has different like uh, it kind of like fires messages to different receptors that are connected to different parts of our body. 
One of the things that I learned recently, well, not recently, it was a couple of years ago, and I know I'm going to totally butcher this, so don't quote me on these numbers. Let's just say that these are the numbers that I was told. So let's say we have um, all this genetic code in our brain, okay? So that genetic code matches genetic code in different parts of our body systems. So let's say I have let me think here. Let's say I have issues with my cardiovascular system. So in my brain, I have genetic code that is directly connected to the genetic code in my cardiovascular system. So when I breathe in an essential oil that supports my cardiovascular system, it is in turn impacting the actual cardiovascular system. So if you are dealing with high blood pressure, I'm gonna use that one for an example, you can put the oils over that part of your body but by diffusing them at night when you're sleeping, you're getting a constant stream of those essential oils into your limbic system and then into that genetic code. So isn't that cool? I learned that because I had somebody over for dinner one time and he was a geneticist. And he just threw out this little bit of trivia to me in conversation. And it was like, oh, I had no idea. So anyways. Very, very cool stuff. So breathing in your essential oils can help you with different parts of your body as well. Now, let's talk about how you're gonna breathe them in. So I'm just breathing it out of my bottle. There's another way, you can put them in your hands. Does anybody wanna say, what's your favorite oil to put in your hands, rub together and breathe in really deeply? Passion, I just did it. I just used green mandarin. Peppermint. Somebody's awake. So I love to do that with adaptive. Yep. For sure. Love it. Putting it in your diffuser, I would hope. Do we all have diffusers right now? No one's mm -hmm. lacking a diffuser in the home, are they? We have some amazing diffusers available. And they're really, really cool. And Darlene, did you have a question? No. Uh -uh. Okay. I don't know if the hand was there before. I'm going to put it down so I don't get confused. <laughs> okay. But yeah, if you have a question, put that hand back up. Okay. So diffusers. So a lot of people don't really know how much to put in. I am a little liberal with my essential oils. Who puts like six drops? Sometimes I'll do six drops of each one. <laughs> I like to really smell my essential oils, but that's because I'm trying to replicate the amazing aroma of scented candles. <laughs> and I love the smell of cinnamons and cloves. And so holiday joy is what I diffuse almost the entire winter season. But now that it's warming up, I've switched over to citrus bloom. I love that one. I think but orange um, square footage is a big deal too. Jennifer, I have a, a huge house downstairs and up. So putting more drops in is giving me more. It, it goes across a wider space. Mm -hmm. If you're in a smaller space, like an apartment, you don't really need more than three. But yeah, in, or a bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. experiment. I would say at least three, no more than six at a time. If you're not familiar with diffusing oils, just go slow. I will say there are some oils that really bother me if I get too many. Does anybody else have that situation? Michelle, which one bothers you? This is going to probably sound really strange, but lavender, too much lavender and I get really congested. Yeah, me too. I have to put orange in almost a lot of those more stronger oils. Patchouli, I can't do that one too much. Maybe one drop with a lot of lime, but we all have our funny little stories like that. Dang, Kimberly, 15 drops and another one takes 25. Yeah, if you have the big, uh, I think, what, I forget what it's called, the really large humidifier one. Oh, yeah. Uh, if Dawn, I think it's called, that one takes 15 drops. And then I have another one that's about the size of a basketball and it takes like 500 milliliters of water. Not as much as the, the the humidifier one, but it takes 25 drops and it covers my big great room. Yeah, and she has a really big great room too. 
Very cool. Okay, so that's aromatic. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? No. The, I, I just wanna add something. I found this out the other day, I was trying some different stuff. Not all of our oils are for aromatic use. I mean, why would you aromatically diffuse digest then? I don't know, but or deep blue. Deep blue. Deep blue. It deep blue. Up your airways. <laughs> I have diffused it though before for nausea, but I, that was just the first one that came to mind. Aroma touch. You're saying not to be diffused, right? Because I mean, we smell them and they're aromatically used when we use them. That they're not going to harm us, but just that you shouldn't diffuse them. Maybe. Right. Don't waste them in your diffuser. Uh huh. Just that they're not meant for your diffuser. They're meant for your aches and your pains in your yeah. body. Right. I actually well, had a friend that diffused deep blue when I came over to see her. <laughs> She's like, I have never tried that one. I thought I'd do it. And we were having dinner. <laughs> it <was> so funny. <laughs> I thought, okay, I never diffused deep blue. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> um, it's funny because deep blue is actually a really good oil for grief and emotional pain. So, I mean, why not? Well, um, now I have to tell on myself because I diffused deep blue and I'm like, I don't know what this is going to do, but here we go. And then I turned it over and looked on the bottle and it did not say aromatic use. And I thought, well, I like the way it smells. So let, we'll see. Yeah, um, that's funny. Because it does say when, when we're going through, I remember seeing an A and a T for that. So I think it's for aromatic, but it, it's funny that you say it's for grief the deep blue because when I went to go see my friend um it was right around when I lost my dad too so it didn't bother me but I just thought it was that's interesting that she chose that and you're saying that yeah for sure I think it's a very soothing smell so anyways and it's a soothing blend so soothing for emotions soothing for the body all right so we talked about aromatic what's one of the other ways that we can use our essential oils Topical. Topical. What are some of your favorite topical ways to use your essential oils? Nicole is showing us right now. Nicole, you want to explain what you're doing? I put, I roll, I like to take my rollers and put them on my wrists and then rub them together and get some good smells there. And then I can smell, it's like a perfume, you know. Um, recently, I really am liking Hope. And I, that's what I have here. Hey, there's a background to hope. You want to share what that is real quick? Uh, I don't know the whole background. I just know that it's for the healing hands and it's for the, um, the, something about human trafficking, right? I don't know the history, but you can tell. Does any, know, anybody else know the history? It was developed for something like healing, right? Isn't, isn't it uh, something that they can pass out to Thing, children or uh, adults that they think are involved in human trafficking that may want a way out and that has a special label for that that it can peel off and it's got like a 800 number on there for when they want to seek reach out and ask for help right so originally and, the go ahead well the other thing is that all of the proceeds from that oil goes to healing hands foundation yes um, actually, it goes to under, Operation Underground Railroad specifically. So the blend was actually formulated specifically for Operation Underground Railroad. Look them up. It's an amazing organization ran for, by a man named Tim Ballard, ex, uh, uh, what was he, ex uh, CIA agent, realizing that he couldn't do as much working for the government as he could on his own. So he quit his job and he formed a task force that goes into other countries like Cambodia, Thai Thailand, um, and other places like that. There's one specific country they actually started in, and I can't remember which one it is right now. But um, they actually would create these uh, situations where they would pretend to be buyers and they would go and look at catalogs of young women that they could purchase and they would get as many, they pretend like they're having a party. They get as many of these girls together and then they would come and they would arrest the um, traffickers 
and then they would rescue the young girls. Well, that's one thing that they did. The other thing they did is they would have this perfume that they would hand out to these girls and they would just let them know, peel the label back so you know how to use it. And on the inside, it would tell them instructions in their own language on how to get rescued. So how cool is that? So whenever you purchase the Hope Oil, $20 goes to that organization. It's amazing. All right. So that's topical. So let's give some topical usage rules. There's three places you should never put your essential oils. Where are they? In your eyes. Up your nose. In your ears. Okay, let me give you a little bit more understanding of that. So in your eyes is pretty easy. Who has accidentally got an essential oil in or near your eyes? Burnt. It does pass, I promise. <laughs> But it is the worst, no matter how bland the oil is, it is the worst. Um, up the nose, you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Who uses a neti pot or a sinus rinse? Don't put oils in those things. All right, the better way to do it is breathe them out of a warm steamy mug. And then in the ears, this one is a little bit, there's a little bit you can do here. So I'm gonna use earaches, for example. What's your favorite essential oil for earaches? Tea tree. I like basil a lot too. Basil, lavender. Tea tree. Lavender. Those are all great. You can experiment with this. What I do, so this is my bottle of tea tree. I take my finger, just go like this. So I have a little bit of oil on my finger. And then what I do is I actually rub it just right in the inside right here. That's what I do. And then I put it on the outside, just like that. And that's how I get my oils into my ears. So remember, what did I say essential oils do? They move. So when you put them somewhere close to where you need them, they're gonna move to where they're supposed to go because they move in and out of the tissues. Tammy, yes. Uh, do they have information in a pamphlet? I don't know, but I know it's on the website somewhere as far as the hope oil goes. So let's talk about diluting your essential oils. Now, I am a huge fan of using them undiluted. That's just how I prefer them. However, when you dilute an essential oil with fractionated coconut oil, here's mine and my little eyedropper, what you're actually doing is slowing down the absorption. So two things happen. You get max benefit, meaning because they're volatile, they don't start floating off into the air as much. And then two, they slow down going into your body. So you're less likely to have skin irritations as a result. Has that ever happened to anybody? Lemon oil, when I use it too much for sinus congestion, I end up with chapped skin. So, um, but it does happen sometimes. So use your fractionated coconut oil and that'll limit irritations. If you do end up overusing your oils and um, you know, like in my instance, I kept putting it across my nose. If that does happen and you get chapped skin or you get irritated skin, don't use another essential oil in hopes of soothing it. You just don't want to put anything on it. Just let the skin recover. Okay. And it will recover. It happens. It's happened to all of us. Um, especially when we are got a specific issue that's won't go away and you keep applying the same oil in the same spot. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody have anything to add? I know I missed probably a lot for topical. So I'm gonna let some of my team chime in. What are some other topical tips you have? Did we do headache? Yeah, so what do you do? If you, if you have yeah. a headache, where would you put it? On your forehead, your temples, and the back of your neck, best places. Don't get it in your eyes. Kimberly. I just, oh, go ahead, Pam. Go ahead, I like Pam. The, re the reminder that you have given us in previous Zoom calls that you can put it anywhere you put perfume on your on your wrist, um, on your on the side of your neck, the back of your neck, um, over your heart, along your spine, bottom of your feet. Um, 
I'm sure there's more, but like you said, three places you don't put it. <laughs> yeah, as long as you follow those three no rules, no, no rules, you can be pretty experimental. Kimberly, did you have something to add? Oh, no, just while we're talking about topically, we're going to use it for skin issues. So you put it directly on your skin wherever you have the issue. Mm hmm. It can go in your shampoo. It can go in your skincare. I have really been loving rosemary in my shampoo. It feels so good and it's so good for your scalp, no matter what your scalp issue is. So Nicole made a comment in the chat and I thought it was a really good comment and I want to bring it to attention. So when you get an oil where you don't want it and it's uncomfortable, what do you do? Grab your oil, a fractionated oil. coconut oil, fractionated <laughs> carrier coconut. oil, or you can get olive oil or something, anything like that. Yeah, any other vegetable oil will work. What do you not do? Don't get water. <laughs> Don't get water. I would say Don't go when try I to wash it out. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you guys know this, but there's an actual essential oil injury report that exists. There's thousands of injury reports with essential oils. The most common one is using an essential oil improperly, it being uncomfortable, and then they use water to wash it off. It's the most common one. Probably 80% of them are that. Usually because you use too much on guard. You know, you should use one drop, they use 10. That kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, thank you, Kimberly. She attached that link about the hope oil. Okay. So we talked about aromatic. We talked about topical. What's the other way we can use our essential oils? Lisa Mal, that you want to unmute yourself and share? Internally. Internally. So there's actually two ways that you can use them internally. What are they? Say what? There's two main ways you can use them internally. Do you guys know what they are? Orally and then a capsule. There's actually uh, more. You can use honey, them. That's the same thing, orally and in a capsule. You're still putting it here. I was thinking that you were having us make one of those things you put in your bottom. I'm clear so, now. Sarah so, is sitting next to me. She is cracking up. That's what she's talking about. But how about sublingually and yes. in a capsule? Yeah, so if you actually look in the Modern Essentials book and you look at internal usage, it breaks it down, I think, into five categories. You have oral, you have capsule, you have suppository, you have vaginal, and then you have sublingual. Interesting, huh? If anybody wants to try one of those and share a testimony next time, we'll hear it. I will say I don't highly, I don't recommend putting essential oils on tampons. I know that women have tried that for different like vaginal issues. I don't recommend that. Okay, so let's go to this oral and capsules. Okay, so capsules just basically mean you get a veggie cap and you put your oils in it. I highly recommend that you add some olive oil to it. Olive oil is a great carrier oil to use for internal usage. And then orally just basically means they're putting them in your mouth. But the cool thing is we have mucous membranes. Once we get to the back of our throat, that's where they start. And the citrus oils specifically really love mucous membranes. Well, mucous membranes line the entire digestive tract. So they actually act as a carrier oil for essential oils when we drink them. And even when we put them in capsules and they dissolve in the stomach. So there's a lot of fear mongering out there about essential oils and mucous membranes. As long as you're not overusing them, like uh, who's ever done like a spoonful of lemon oil? I've heard that happen before. Oh, was it you, Michelle? So it wasn't a spoonful, but the story goes that I drank some cold water <laughs> instead <laughs> of room temperature water. And I normally just drop it into my mouth. Well, it kind of chugged out of the bottle and I got about 12 drops of oil instead of one or two. And yes, I drank water afterwards. And then I realized 
I needed to grab the fractionated coconut oil. That's when you learn to take a shot of fractionated coconut oil and you would learn to enjoy it. I would have done olive oil instead. There's the worst thing as a mouthful of oil. No, the worst thing is 12 drops of lemon down your esophagus. Yeah, so actually there is a possible thing that could happen that would not be good. So too much lemon oil means that it will help thin the mucus out, which could actually expose like underlying issues that are in the mucous membrane, like ulcers, reflux, things like that. However, when used appropriately, it can actually help support um, those things. So, all right. So do we have any questions about internal usage? So now I want to take the last part of this class to talk about the five oils. Now, I've talked about this a lot in the past. Do you guys want to throw out some guesses on what you think the five oils are? Lemon, lavender. Most of us know we've been with you before. <laughs> peppermint. Keep going, Ami. Pam, yeah. what'd you peppermint. guys say? Mm -hmm. Frankincense. Frankincense? Yes? No? Keep going. Oh, yeah. Wild orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heather knows me well. That one's at the desk. Balance. You guys are awesome. I feel so fulfilled now as an essential oil educator. <laughs> so, yes, my top five are balance, orange, lavender, peppermint, and frankincense. All right, sorry, I had a TV in the background. I was like, who is that? All right, so let's break this down. So what I do, and I'm just gonna tell you, this is what Jennifer does. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I use peppermint. I, I peppermint. saw Kimberly's lips moving. So I actually Balance have a bottle of peppermint <laughs> by my bed. The first thing I do is I take a little bit put on my tongue and I drink a full glass of water. That gets my digestive system going. It boosts my metabolism and wakes my um, other body systems up. So this alone is going to help your body function better. Peppermint is a vasodilator. It opens the blood vessels. It lets the blood flow more effectively through your body. I feel like that fact alone is going to tip the scales in your health in a positive way. So that's why I do that one. And it doesn't take much because even though we talk about the cheapness, the cost effectiveness of essential oils, I'm not even using a full drop when I do that. I'm just using what collects on the top of the rim. So that's what I do. And then I like to put them on my bottoms, my feet. However, if I'm gonna go get in the shower right away, I usually wait until I'm putting shoes and socks on. What is the next oil that is my favorite to pair with peppermint on the bottoms of my feet? Balance. No. Wild orange. Wild oh. orange. Has anybody ever done these two oils together on the bottoms of the feet? Really, Lisa? I have. Heather, describe the feeling. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Um, it was after I was getting ready to leave after a long day of work. I was headed home and just having that on the bottoms of my feet was, ugh, it was heaven. Like while I was driving home, my feet were actually relaxing. It was, it was awesome. And they were kind of invigorated again. So when I got home and my four and five-year-olds wanted to run and play, <laughs> I could keep up. So it was great. It was both relaxing and invigorating. It was a good blend. Awesome. I remember the first time I did it, I was driving my car and I was going somewhere and I was just thinking, wow, I'm like really excited. What am I excited for? And I was really happy. And that's what it did. And that's because peppermint is invigorating. And then orange, which by the way, peppermint is the oil of a buoyant heart. So if you know you have like fuddy duddy people in your life, peppermint's a really good one to help like lift them. Or you have negative people, then orange is really good. Orange is the oil of an open mind. It's good for people who are pessimistic and negative. 
um, or just really mopey and moody all the time, like my toddler. So anyways, the orange is just really uplifting. It's great for the mood. And the two of them actually smell really great together and are great for focus. Now let's go science on orange. Orange has an ingredient in it that supports the production of glutathione in our cells. Does somebody on my team want to Google glutathione for me really quick and just share what the benefits are? Um, because our body needs it and our cells produce it naturally, but not very well. And you can actually take glutathione supplements, but citrus oils help our cells actually do their job on that. Kimberly, unmute yourself. I got one screen, so I got to keep jumping between the two. Hang on. You're fine. So WebMD says glutathione is a substance produced naturally by the liver. It is also found in fruits, vegetables, and meats. People take glutathione by mouth for treating cataracts and glaucoma, preventing aging or treating or preventing alcoholism, asthma, cancer, heart disease, hepatitis, liver disease, diseases that weaken the body's defense system, including AIDS, AIDS and chronic fatigue syndrome, memory loss, Alzheimer's disease, osteoarthritis, Parkinson's. Glutathione is also used for maintaining the body's defense system and fighting mental, uh, metal and drug poisoning. Wow, look at that's that. That's not all, but that's- Oh a no, really it's good, a long that's list. That's a really good intro. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really long list. It's really important. So while essential oils don't give us vitamins and minerals, it helps our body produce and make what it's supposed to do in those instances. So that's why I love using citrus oils. Citrus oils also help to balance out mucus in the body. And that's a really important part of digestion. We want just enough so that food can slide through, but not so much to where our body is more likely to get sick from it. So the next thing I do is I put balance on and I do this twice a day. The bottoms of the feet are my favorite place to use it. Does anybody else have another favorite place? The back of the neck? On the wrists, armpits, yeah. It makes a great deodorant perfume. On your hands and breathe in. I do that when my kids are making me feel crazy. When you breathe balance in your hands like that, it's a really quick way to ground yourself. I gave a really good description of grounding one time, and I wish I could remember what I said. <laughs> um, but basically, and putting them on, on the bottoms, um, putting, on, putting them on the bottoms of the feet is a great way to use a lot of oils, balance specifically, because it's so effective for the nervous system. So we have all these nerves in the bottoms of our feet that are connected. They're like little tiny strings that connect themselves to other parts of our body. And so by putting that essential oil on the bottoms of the feet, they're getting into those little hair-like nerves and transferring themselves very quickly to other parts of the body. And this is why balance is so good at grounding us, making us feel less irritable, less overwhelmed, and like our brain is kind of sorted out. So that's a good one to have on hand. I actually keep it with me everywhere I go. Does anybody have any questions about balance? So that's why I think that one should be used every day. And I know every once in a while I kind of toss and turn about maybe Copaiba, but the more I look into balance, I just really am very pleased with that one specifically. So the next one is frankincense. And I actually use this one throughout the day for many different things. But I want to hear from us to others. What do some of you others use for frankincense? Where do you put it? On your face for your skin. It's great for your skincare. Under your tongue is one of the most effective ways to support mental health, mental clarity. There we go. I use it on my knees after a workout. 
Yes, it's very supportive for the inflammatory response in the body. And for some people, they have more inflammation in the knees. I use it in a very interesting way that a lot of people don't realize it's good for across my nose for congestion because it is very good at helping to thin out congestion and it doesn't bother the eyes. So that's a good kid tip for little stuffy noses. I like to put it on the bottoms of my feet as well and my lower back and my back of my neck. I like to breathe it in all the time. So I'm always using it. It partners really well with wild orange. Try the two of them together sometime, especially when you need that afternoon pick me up. The other thing that you should probably know about frankincense is it has something in it called sesquiterpenes. They are one of the most small molecules that can be found in essential oils. You guys know what other essential oils have sesquiterpenes in them? Sandalwood, vetiver, specifically. Uh, doesn't black spruce? That one's new one for me and I don't remember. One of the new ones, I think it was black spruce. I remember so, Emily introducing it was really high. Maybe it's monoterpenes. That's what I was kind of thinking is monoterpenes. But that also is in frankincense. Yep. Because she was like, there's another one. And we're like, frankincense? Like, we should know <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. So what's really cool is, so let's imagine our brain has this thing called a barrier. See how my fingers are really tight? You can't get there. Okay. If someone has Parkinson's or um, dementia, what are some other brain diseases? ALS. There's stroke. no tr stroke. There is no, and I don't like to use the word cure, but medical, the medical world uses the word cure when it comes to diseases like this. There's no cures for those things. And the treatments aren't even, they really are just about giving you better days and not really treating the disease. So these are really, really tight. We want our brain to be very protective, okay? We don't want to get stuff in there because you have diseases like meningitis. That's bacteria in the brain. You don't want that, okay? Our brain doesn't have an immune system like the rest of our body. So it has this barrier. The sesquiterpene con or constituent in frankincense is so small, it can get through that barrier. How cool is that? So if you know somebody with some of those untreatable, uncurable brain diseases, be like the most amazing friend, change their life and give them some frankincense. But if it can do that, it can be very good for our brains, like normal functionality. So I struggle with ADD. Sometimes it actually does help me, but for the most part, it hinders me. So I use a lot of frankincense for that. If someone struggles with mood issues, like maybe there's even a diagnosis, you can put frankincense under the tongue. It's just gonna be really, really good for the brain. I love using it on little children because their brains are still developing. And I just think about if we have a generation of children raised with frankincense putting, getting into their brains, imagine they're gonna be the ones that rule the world. And all those other kids that are addicted to their little cell phones, they're gonna be working for the frankincense kids. So that's Jennifer's plan to take over the world. Who wants to help me? <laughs> yes, frankincense touch is amazing for kids as well. It comes in the fractionated coconut oil. So I feel like I went a lot longer than I meant to, but I wanted to like give lots of time in between these different segments for you guys to ask questions or insert thoughts and stuff. So those are the five oils that we use every day. We got about five minutes to answer questions. If you're wondering, well, how would I use this oil for that? Oh, I didn't even talk about lavender. I just realized we know what lavender is. It's a natural antihistamine. It's an analgesic. It's great for pain. It's calming for the nervous system. It's one of the number one oils to use for sleep, but you can use it for bug bites and pain as well. Sunburns. What are one of the most un unexpected ways somebody would use lavender? I've got one. Kimberly. For TMJ, you can rub it across your jaw to relax your jaw so you're not gripping your teeth in the middle of the night. That's a good one. 
Yeast infections. It's also an antifungal. So there you go. Anybody have any questions about the things that we talked about tonight? You didn't tell yeah. us how you use it on a daily basis. I just try to get it on me somehow. I usually use it in the diffuser with orange. So Michelle was talking about earlier that lavender bothers her. It actually bothers me too. Um, and so I use it with orange. Ami, did you have a question? Yeah, so if you have a yeast infection, where do you apply it is my question. Can I get really TMI? Yes, please. Okay, so this is a recording. It's probably gonna make it out into the world, but that's okay. We're all women, right? So what I do, I actually use tea tree and lavender, and you can do this whether you have a yeast infection or not. It's just really soothing. Um, and I put, so I use my fractionated coconut oil and I put it in the palm of my hand, maybe a dime size, okay? And then I drop two drops of lavender, two drops of tea tree, but if you wanna start with one drop, you can. And then I just take my fingers, like this, what do I do with those two fingers, guys? I think that's about as TMI as I'm gonna get. So remember when I said oils are volatile and they move, just get them in the general location. And after a couple of minutes, you're gonna start to feel it kind of moving up into the vaginal area. And you're gonna feel very good after that because tea tree is really soothing. Lavender is kind of an anti-itch, but also anti-pain. So that's what I do. Yep, I don't do any kind of insertion or anything because just on the outside. Thank you. You're welcome. What other questions can I answer? Or anybody have anything they want to add? So somebody said about putting the lavender on the jawline. Um, so my five-year-old, Eleanor, grinds her teeth really bad at night um so it would that be safe to just put like up towards her ear like that part of the jawline or all the way down how's that work yeah but exactly dilute it. what you just said you want to dilute it mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately lavender has a little bit of a vapor and when it's too close to eyes you definitely feel it kids seem to be more sensitive especially if they rub their face lavender is great you can use serenity as well Okay, very cool. Yeah, and I always put coconut oil on their face at night, so that's that'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, good. sounds good. I can't wait to hear how that works. I forgot I was muted. I was telling you, Heather, that it also comes in a touch. There's a lavender touch. So that's that's perfect for kids. Yeah, actually, I really recommend families with children get the touch kit because it's nine oils of the main ones that we use every day and they're already pre-diluted perfectly to the science of the effectiveness of pre-dilution. And what I love is I just have them on my kitchen island and even my youngest three-year-old, he'll go, he knows lavender is the purple one and he'll go grab lavender. That's the only one he ever grabs. And he's always putting that on him and it gives me a peace of mind. I know they're not gonna get hurt, so. Thank you, that's awesome. You're welcome. Well, we're at our hour. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording.